Hey, I'm here with Matt Max Spirit, and we're going to talk about AKS on Azure Stack HCI and how you can bring the AKS service into your data center. So stay tuned. So, hey, Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? Doing great, doing great. I'm happy to talk to you today about uh, AKS on Azure Stack HCI. Um, so, uh, Matt, I always like to intro introduce like my the guests a little bit or the speakers. Um, what like, I know that you have worked a lot in the past um, with Azure Hybrid, especially also on Azure Stack Hub. Uh, can you explain a little bit first about like what you're doing, and then probably also tell us a little bit more about our hybrid story? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, hi everyone. I'm Matt McSpirit. For those that don't know me, and and my role currently at Microsoft is working with our customers and our partners around some of our early adopter technologies. So, uh, those of you familiar, we've just launched Azure Stack HCI, the new Azure Stack HCI 20H2. So, I was part of that uh, early adopter program, early access program where we worked with a number of customers to test and provide feedback about the technology and make it the, the best it could be uh, ahead of, of the first release. And we're doing a similar thing for the new Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI. Uh, so that's part of my core focus now is working with organizations to, who are interested in running Kubernetes on premises as part of their hybrid strategy and really help them onboard and understand the technology and then uh, help us understand how it can uh, move forward and really meet their needs in the future as well. So it's it's a, it's a great area to be in. And, and hybrid, as you know, Thomas, is, is an incredibly exciting and important area and, and a huge area of, of focus for Microsoft. Um, and when we think about hybrid from, from the Microsoft perspective, as you mentioned, Azure Stack has been a core pillar of that for some time. And my focus in, in a previous role was around Azure Stack Hub and working with organizations around bringing a select set of Azure services to their data centers. Now, Azure Stack, as many of you will know, is a family of technologies. So there's Azure Stack Hub, there's Azure Stack HCI, as I just touched on, running on a hyper-converged configuration on industry standard hardware and, and bringing Azure services on top through, through the power of, of Azure Arc, as we'll touch on. There's also Azure Stack Edge as part of our portfolio, which mainly focus predominantly on machine learning analytics on a on Microsoft first party hardware that you run again in your location. But all the while with each of these different Azure Stack technologies, we're bringing our innovations from Azure down to you for you to run in your environments to meet your specific scenario needs. So whether that's compliance or regulations you've got to meet with data on premises, whether it's to do with network latency or any number of reasons that are relevant to your organization, Azure Stack, the family, bring those Azure technologies down to your environment. And, and that doesn't stop there. There's also IoT. So bringing Azure services and integration down to the smallest of devices, whether that's something like Azure Sphere, whether that's uh, drones running our Azure-based Azure technology and IoT integrations, it's an incredible set of innovations. And then finally, with the new Azure Arc, which I say new, we announced it probably over a year ago, but it's still new to a lot of people. With Azure Arc, not only are we providing a, a layer of, of control in Azure that enables you to surface your non-Azure resources into Azure for management, for policy, for governance, but we also start to allow you to bring Azure services down to environments that aren't Azure. So for instance, as shown on the slide here, we could push data services to an AWS cloud, or we could bring in servers that are running in Google Cloud into management in Azure. We've got a whole host of innovation taking place that's powered by Azure Arc, and it links in beautifully with, with the work we're doing around uh, Kubernetes and Azure Stack HCI as well. So innovation anywhere with, that, with Azure is, is, a, tr is a, a great reflection of everything we're doing in, in the hybrid space. It's, it's phenomenal, as you know, Thomas, as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think one of the things I always like, where I, like I, I need to explain to a lot of people is like, they asked me, okay, now you have Azure Arc, so does that replace Azure Stack uh, and all these kind of, uh, kind of like questions, right? And I think what is very important is that we don't just have a single product, which is our hybrid solution, right? We don't have like say, okay, hey, if, if you do hybrid, that's the solution, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, well, I'd like to buy Azure Hybrid, please, Tim. No, <laughs> not, not quite that, but yeah. Exactly. It's like really depends on what the customer actually actually needs. And so speaking of customers, um, 
what one of the big demands uh, we are seeing is obviously like that they do application modernizing using, for example, containers. And mm -hmm. so Kubernetes plays a big role in that. And we have some great services uh, in Azure uh, for Kubernetes, right? That, that's right. Yeah. Kubernetes on Azure has, has been in place for, for, for some time now and, and in a variety of different forms. So, for instance, uh, if you're, you know, you've got a lot of experience with VMs on Azure, as, as have many of our customers. So you can actually deploy Kubernetes yourself using our AKS engine on Azure, which will stand up a, a Kubernetes infrastructure in IaaS VMs, giving you full control and exposure to all of the plumbing of Kubernetes to play with it and configure it as much as you want. But you know what? That's not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody wants to get into the plumbing of Kubernetes. And you know what? They say uh, there's a lot of Azure services where Microsoft, you handle the complexity of of, of this particular service, just let me consume it as a, as a tenant, if you will, and or as a user. And Kubernetes is no different. So we've developed in Azure the AKS service, uh, the Azure Kubernetes service. Um, and so Kubernetes on Azure, the innovations we're building into that Azure service, ensuring we're bringing best practices from, from our customer organizations, from our support organizations, from our innovation, from the industry. We're embedding all of that knowledge into the Kubernetes infrastructure. So we take care of it so you don't have to think about that as, as much. It's incredibly hard. And you know as well as, as anybody that Azure and security are, are hand in hand. It's incredibly important to us and to our customers. And Kubernetes, we, we don't stop at the, at the Azure infrastructure layer. We go into the application layers, the services, and we, we harden by design. Uh, not only how we build the products, but how we run them uh, in a cloud as well. Azure support is incredibly uh, powerful and useful to so many organizations who, who encounter issues and they need support and help. And that doesn't, that doesn't change when we bring Kubernetes into that mix. We've got specialists and experts there to help you on your Kubernetes journey to get the best from the platform. And then as I touched on previously, and, and again, something you and, and I'm sure many of your, your viewers are familiar with, the management in Azure, what you can do with policy and governance and all of the different controls that are now being exposed again through Azure Arc to non-native Azure resources, Kubernetes fits into that plan as we'll see a bit later on as well. So you get that enterprise control. Uh, and But all of this is innovation that up until recently has been exclusively living in Azure from a Microsoft perspective. So if you had any needs to uh, do things in your own data center, then you were really looking at building Kubernetes yourself, which, yeah. you know, it's not that easy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I can tell you, like, I know customers really love our AKS IO service running in Azure, right? Uh, however, some of them are telling me, and obviously they, they come and say, hey, Thomas, like, it's great. We love it. We use it for what we can, but sometimes we have some data sovereignty challenges we have some network um, latency challenges or we don't have like good internet connectivity in some uh, locations of our companies in some like let's say branch offices or even data center locations or factories yeah and then they ask me how can I like I want to use that AKS service like in my own data center yeah uh, and that is what you're ta here to talk about today exactly that's a perfect segue yeah exactly perfect leading so that is where the Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI, which may be one of the longest product names that we've that we've ever released, uh, but we shorten it down to AKS on Azure Stack HCI or even AKS HCI if you're if you're uh, yeah if you prefer. But either way, this is a new technology currently in preview, uh, so we're available public preview, so you can download this yourself and you can run this in your own environment. And what this brings is all of that cool stuff that I just spoke about around the security, the best practices, the support, uh, the control plane, the, the efficient management. It, it packages it all up in such a way that enables you to then easily and in a very automated way, and those are critical uh, elements, roll this out in your own environment, running on a Hyper-V infrastructure, either running on the new Azure Stack HCI 20H2 or running on a Windows Server 2019 based Hyper-V infrastructure. And so what are some of the benefits there? Well, firstly, we bring all of that knowledge, that great innovation from the Azure Kubernetes service down. There's no point reinventing the wheel here. We've got a fantastic service in Azure. Let's use it and let's bring it to uh, an on-premises environment so you can run it at the edge or in your data center or wherever is relevant to you. It's hybrid by design. 
But just based on the fact that Azure Stack HCI, the underlying platform is hybrid and integrated with Azure, but then you've also got the Kubernetes layer that has come from Azure. So it's been designed with hybrid in mind. And we'll delve into some more of these in, 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 in a short while as well. It's not just about uh, Windows-based applications, as is Azure in general. Uh, there's a significant proportion of workloads out there on Azure that are not based on Windows. And Microsoft is fully embracing non-Microsoft platforms, workloads, uh, and more. And AKS on Azure Stack HCI is no exception to that. So if you're thinking about this and thinking, well, you know, I've, I've got, uh, we've got Hyper-V, but I, I, that's just for our Windows workloads. Absolutely not the case. Linux runs great on Hyper-V, and as a result of that, AKS runs great on, on Azure Stack HCI and Hyper-V as well. And then finally, that knowledge and that innovation we've built from hardening in Azure, again, we're not going to throw that away because that's incredibly important. And you can learn a lot and benefit from our, our innovations in that space and bring that to your own environment in a very secure, hardened uh, solution. And so we're going to delve into each of these in, in a bit more detail. I'm going to show some of the some of the uh, demos of some of the stuff as well and, and show you how easy it is to roll it out. Because one thing I think um, we've discussed in the past, Thomas, is, is around IT pros and Kubernetes. Because, you know, let's face it, it's, it's containers, containerizing applications and workloads, it probably lends itself a little bit more to the developer audience, historically at least. But with the talk of Azure Kubernetes service running on premises on Azure Stack HCI, that's running on your infrastructure. You know, and yeah. you therefore need to be involved in this. You need to be understanding and, and embracing, but also you've got the tools at your disposal to help control and manage and provide the best Kubernetes platform for your development teams building applications. So for IT pros, it's still incredibly relevant, if not more relevant going forward as Kubernetes comes more prevalent and starts to encroach in, in your data center and edge, edge locations. I guess yeah. you've seen that as well. Oh, absolutely. So this is this is so funny that you bring this up because I really like two days ago, I had exactly that conversation and like people ask, like someone asked me, but why is it like that Kubernetes is just for like, people think it's just for developers, right? Mm. Is that true? And I was like, no, of course not. Like someone obviously needs to like deploy that and needs to manage it and needs to keep control of it and take advantage of like the security building in that. And, and it's not just like developers probably are going to use it and leverage it to deploy their containerized applications, but they should not be the ones managing that platform. Right. And I think um, it's like kind of like in the stages of virtualization where we did the same thing with VMs. We kind of like if you, I know people are going to hate me for saying that, but kind of like it's very similar to what we do now with containers, yep. right? Yeah, and, you're right. And, and so, so as you mentioned, the IT pro uh, who needs to actually go out and deploy and manage that. I mean, this slide you showed me and promised me some really cool things here, uh, but there there is always like, okay, now it, you promised me that I can run a Kubernetes environment mm -hmm. on premises. And usually that takes a lot of effort to actually go out and deploy um and and manage that is like so is that different well yeah i mean it's, it's on my slide in the middle bullet point here easy deployment you've got a simple deployment and the nice thing about and you'll see this shortly i'm, I'm going to show you both of these deployment types because there are two you know for those of you who love powershell of which it should be everybody right everybody loves powershell you can deploy this whole thing through powershell and once it's deployed then you're you can work with your development teams for them to consume this infrastructure but if you prefer to use the Windows Admin Center, which is, is very popular with IT pros, it's a great, rich uh, graphical experience. If you prefer to deploy through through that GUI, use Admin Center. So I'll show you both and we'll, we'll compare and contrast um, the different options there. One is slightly faster. I'm not going to give any hints as to which one you think might be faster to deploy, but uh, there you go. And as we talked about before, it's that Kubernetes platform. Microsoft is adding a lot of value, a lot of innovation to Kubernetes, but it's also providing that back to the community so others can benefit from it because it's ultimately an open source uh, solution. But then we also build innovation that's specific to our platform so that Kubernetes can integrate with the Hyper-V layer, the cluster APIs, the storage, the networking. So there's some stuff that we've had to build on top to really gel these things together. But again, we, we release a lot of this out to the community so others can benefit from, from the learnings and from the technology. And speaking of uh, benefiting from learns and leveraging existing stuff, if you're out there thinking, well, I know Hyper-V, I know Azure Stack HCI as well, I'm familiar with Azure, I'm familiar with the admin center, 
this should be right in up your street because this is introducing Kubernetes, which yes, may be you new to you and it may require some additional learning, uh, some some ways that you can manage and and deploy applications might be new to you as an IT pro. But the rest of it, deploying the deploying the Kubernetes infrastructure using tools like PowerShell Admin Center and the Azure Portal, that should all be familiar. So leveraging those existing skills is something that we've very much focused on through the development of this. So. Um, but what's actually getting deployed? So this isn't, um, I don't want to hide anything here. I want to make sure you know that everything that gets laid down, I've got one kind of high level architecture here, and then I'll go a little bit deeper in some, some more specifics here. But right at the bottom, we talked about Azure Stack HCI uh, briefly before. So Azure Stack HCI 20H2 is the new release that uh, became generally available in December of, of 2020. And that is our hyper-converged infrastructure solution to run on industry standard hardware from our great partners, a big wide ecosystem of great partners uh, that have hardware for HCI. And that is the layer that you ultimately deploy AKS on HCI on top of through these automated methods that I'll, I'll show you shortly. And um, what that essentially lays down is, uh, or what it enables you to do is essentially deploy lin li Windows, Linux and Windows containers. It's just an abbreviate, quick abbreviation there. Lin Linux and Windows container hosts that we, Microsoft, provide the images for those. You don't need to build those yourself, which is a big win. So we push those down we, into your environment from Azure. So there's an element of connectivity required uh, to get deployed. We, as I, I briefly explained a few moments ago, provide that storage networking and cluster integration. Um, but again, we provide that to the community. And then the rest of Kubernetes is compliant open source components, meaning if you did decide, you know what, I've deployed some applications on AKS on HCI and I need to move them to another Kubernetes distribution somewhere else, maybe in Azure, maybe in another cloud, that's fine. What we're building here is still just Kubernetes. So meaning you've got that portability, you're not locked into a Microsoft Kubernetes or a, a vendor X Kubernetes, which is really important for, uh, for applications and workloads and, and portability out there. And then optionally on top, you've got Azure Arc, as, as we'll see later on, to manage uh, those Kubernetes clusters in Azure. And I say optionally, if you prefer to use Kube Control or you've got existing in, uh, investments in Kubernetes cluster management, monitoring, and so on, you don't have to use Azure Arc. But uh, as we'll see from the demo, it does provide a significant value add uh, to running and managing your Kubernetes infrastructure. Okay, that is pretty cool. I, I like what we see here. Like we get we provide the infrastructure with Azure Stack HCI. Yep. We have in those multiple layers of abstraction and our management tools, which actually help you to set up the Kubernetes environment, right? I think that yep. is that is like uh, something which again, as you said, is a steep learning curve when you're just getting started with it. And we are basically helping with that. And we also don't do a kind of like just Microsoft version of that. It's 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 actually like as you said, it's consistent. It's, com it's it works with other Kubernetes. It's there's a um, consistency between that, yeah. so uh, there's no risk of locking you in or doing something completely closed. Um, it's really like a, an open, like the open source Kubernetes we all know and and yeah. love. Exactly. The big innovation that, that we're bringing, the value that AKS on HCI, it goes back to a, a couple of things we mentioned earlier on around that streamlining a deployment, because otherwise it's really complex to deploy, uh, DIY, do it yourself. And then we bring in our, our knowledge and our experience in, in hardening and securing. We've got the Azure support that's, that's backing you there. We've got that control plane. So we're, we're really... We're taking the, the base and the core of Kubernetes and we're, we're streamlining and adding to it in so many different ways. And that's our unique value add. But from your application okay. perspective, you've still got that portability of choice of, of where you want to move that application to. And, and that consistency also with, with AKS in the cloud. And to go one click deeper, uh, this is quite a, a high level, at least uh, zoomed out graphic. So I'll, I'll explain what's on there for, for those of you um, who want to know a little bit more. It's when you deploy, and this we'll see this through demo as well, when you deploy AKS on Azure Stack HCI, that is at a high level, it's a two-step process. So we're not diving straight into deploying clusters that you can run your apps. The first stage is actually on the left-hand side of this graphic, where you've got your AKS, you've got your Azure Stack HCI cluster, and you deploy what we'll term the management cluster or alternatively platform services. So you run kind of step one of the installation process, and that lays down. Uh, a couple of workloads, a couple of virtual machines uh, that essentially provide the management control 
for the rest of your Kubernetes clusters, your target clusters or your worker clusters, if you prefer. Um, so step one is deploying those platform services, which I'll cover in a few moments. And then step two is then you go on to deploy your actual clusters that will run your workloads, your applications, your your uh, other services that you're building to be containerized. So in that right-hand side of the graphic where you see the Kubernetes cluster box, there's a control plane for each, uh, contr uh, each particular cluster that gets deployed. So load balancer, control plane, VMs or VM. Uh, and then you've got your actual worker nodes, which as the name would suggest, do the work. They run your applications they, and they are also VMs. So those of you familiar with Hyper-V, with, uh, with Azure Stack HCI and running virtualized infrastructure, these are still running in VMs, but they are container host VMs, meaning they, uh, in the most case, at least in the worker node sense, and they're running your applications and services that you're deploying. Okay, so yeah. that's essentially the two-stage process that gets laid down as part of um, a part of deploying AKS on Azure Stack HCI. Okay, that looks pretty cool. So what you promised me is like that you actually are going to show how we actually going to do this and how easy that actually is because i still can't believe that it's that easy to it, be honest, fair. honestly i promise you it's, it's that easy it's that easy but it does take a few minutes so let's uh, let's go to my demo slide here and i've actually prepared uh, the the kind of the admin center the gui version and the powershell we're going to run through both they're only a few minutes long each one um, but i'll talk you through some of the key considerations uh, of, of both. So let's let's kick off with the admin center one because I think that's let's start with the GUI and then we'll we'll the icing on the cake is the PowerShell one because you'll see how easy it is. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Okay. So the first thing to bear in mind with with um, AKS on HCI is still in preview. So this is the preview page. We'll put it in the resources. Download the bits. And what you'll find then when, when you've got the bits is there'll be a, an admin center extension in there. There's some PowerShell modules. We, for this GUI version, we only need the admin center extension. And we drop it in a folder. I've just got C drive AKS uh, in this case. So we'll drop it in that folder. And uh, from there, within the Windows admin center, which if I close my uh, window here, I'm in the admin center here. And if I look in my settings, and for those of you this is who this is new for, uh, extensions, extensions are ways of, of adding functionality. You'll see I've added that folder path and it will appear in my available extensions list. But I've already installed it. So you'll see there Azure Kubernetes Services is already populated as an installed extension to Windows Admin Center, which allows it to do more stuff. The more extensions you add, the more stuff Admin Center can manage. And I've got an Azure Stack HCI cluster under management here that I'll connect to. And what you'll see, because I've added that extension, is I've got the AKS service in the bottom left. And when that loads up, I've got this new wizard that allows me, remember step one, to walk through setting up a management cluster or the, the core platform services that essentially um, allow me to then go on and deploy um, uh, the AKS HCI worker nodes or, or target clusters. So there's a few prereqs that you need to be aware of. We need some space to store some stuff on your admin center box as well, because we download images and then we push them over to the AKS HCI uh, or the Azure Stack HCI cluster to then build the AKS infrastructure. In this release that I'm using, we require DHCP but in, in, uh, in the environment, but in the future, we'll also support uh, static IPs uh, in, the, in the next couple of releases. And then Azure Stack HCI, uh, the AKS HCI um, deployment will actually walk you through uh, configuring, opening necessary firewall ports. It'll check all of these different things in terms of determining that you've got the right num amount of space, uh, both on cluster shared volumes and the right amount of memory on your, your clustered infrastructure as well. So these are all things that the system is going to check for to ensure that um, you're ready to go. And then once it goes ahead and, and starts the process, you provide your password, which obviously has to be password one, two, three. Otherwise, it's just, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, and then from there, it's going to test, have you got enough space, as I was describing before, have you got the right uh, roles and features installed within your um, uh, Azure Stack HCI hosts? Have you got CSVs? Have you got the necessary amount of space that's required? Uh, I think some of the space requirements are a little bit more on the cautious side in this in this uh, first preview phase. I don't, you don't necessarily need a terabyte of space to run all of this, that's for sure. Uh, but we just uh, check for what you've got uh, and make sure you've got enough to run the VMs. Now we're into defining 
what our management or platform services, where they will be deployed and the name. So AKS Management Cluster One, the default, choose a CSV, choose a vSwitch, and if you're using VLANs, and then if you want to adjust any of the VLAN, uh, sorry, the load balancer settings for your um, environment, just for the management services. You can register with Azure, no cost for setting up uh, this particular element of the infrastructure. And then within a few moments, we'll click review and create, and then we'll click next. And that is essentially, as e I would say that fits in the easy deployment uh, stage so far. I think I'm ticking that box. Um, that takes, in this case, about half an hour in my environment. And what's happening in that is it's downloading the images, downloading the Windows container host image from Azure, downloading the Linux container host image, putting everything where it needs to be on the target cluster. And then from there, it's um, once it's all deployed and configured, you've then got your platform services, your management infrastructure up and running. So that does take a, a few moments from there. So that's something you might want to account for. Not to say it's difficult, just takes a few moments to, to finish. And then once you have finished, what you're going to be able to do is retrieve the uh, kubeconfig file, which is very important for connecting to and managing that uh, management cluster. Because essentially, we have set up a, a Kubernetes cluster here that's just used for management. You're not going to deploy any workloads to that. And so you'll see here an example of that kubeconfig file. And if we open it in our trusty uh, notepad, you'll see a bit of information about the Kubernetes cluster, about uh, certificate information, so we can establish um, a secure communication. So the kube, anybody who's familiar with Kubernetes will, will know what the kubeconfig file is used for. But remember, that is the platform services, the management cluster. No workloads will be deployed to that particular uh, cluster. Uh, so once that's done, what, what other steps do we have to do? Well, it's worthwhile going back to Admin Center, the, the landing page there, going into the cluster again. And in this case, we're going to just check, just to prove that something happened, because I know, Thomas, I don't want you to think that I've just kind of imagined all of this and nothing has actually been deployed. So there you see two VMs. In the preview, it's just, just two VMs get deployed for this management layer. So the control plane and a load balancer that get deployed onto the environment. The rest of the VMs are just there for other stuff. Did that, okay. that was that easy with admin center? I mean, do I do I live up to expectations there so far? Being easy, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Super happy with that. Uh, I'm, right. I'm, I have to be honest. I, I'm impressed how easy that was. Like I I worked I worked with Kubernetes before, and I have to say, like if you set something up in something like this up in production, then usually that takes much much more time to to actually do it and and making especially if you're just getting started with it. Right? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. But, and yeah, the team's but, done an amazing job. Absolutely. So, but one thing I have, obviously, I, as you know, it's probably like if you do it the first time, I will probably use Windows Admin Center and do it exactly the way so I can see what actually is going to happen. But yeah. what if I have to do that, like, not just like twice, but like if I really need to like five, six, seven times, 10 times, maybe I need to set up hundreds of these environments. Yeah. Um, you promised me there's a PowerShell version of this. Yeah, I did. Yeah, absolutely. But but I know you love Admin Center. You can click through that 100 times. I mean, you could get, once you get the clicks in order, you could do that pretty fast. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but Admin Center, yeah, you, the, the key thing to note here is it's easy. And I only have to do the platform services one time on an HCI cluster. So even if you want to deploy lots and lots of worker nodes, worker clusters, that management one, I only have to do once. Okay, so just to, just to be clear there for folks. But yes, PowerShell, if I'm setting up loads of HCI clusters with AKS and I want the management layer deployed, that's where PowerShell is going to really help. So let's take a look at this one. So with PowerShell, same download, same bits, got to download those uh, for the preview, uh, just register and download. And from there, we're in the same uh, folder here. I'll zoom in, make it a little bit easier. There you'll see um, the same bits as we saw before, but in this case, I've expanded the PowerShell file. We basically select all of those and we drop them on our target nodes. And I've done that already uh, on your Azure Stack HCI nodes. So just drop them into the regular PowerShell modules folder uh, within program files. And once you've done that, you'll see if I uh, check the modules, uh, in this case, he's, so whether or not this is faster or not depends on how fast you can type. Uh, and there you see all the functions uh, from retrieving information to installing AKS HCI, to creating new clusters, to uninstalling, cleaning up, to updating. Uh, and scaling, all sorts of different uh, functions there, and, and the versions listed. That's the latest one that we're using at, at this point in the demo. So the first thing you need to do with PowerShell is do an initialize. And this is similar to what we saw in WAC, where it was checking the nodes, are, are the, the Azure Stack HCI nodes are ready to go. 
So does it have remoting? Does it have the relevant roles and features? That's all good. So that's that might take a moment if you haven't got those things installed. You might need to just uh, enable those roles and features. Then we create what's called a configuration. And think about this as almost like a, a template of what you want your management cluster deployment to look like. So we're going to store our images in this particular folder on the cluster storage. We're going to store our um, the cloud config, which is the configuration file. We're going to store that in a particular location as well. And I'm going to choose to set the VNet as our, for our um, virtual switch as external. Now, that's the one I've already got in place, so it's going to it's going to connect to that one. Now, if I look at the documentation, you'll see there's a whole other load of things that I didn't choose to specify, whether that's VIP pool information, MAC pools, whether I want to specify any load balance or proxy integration, or if I want to define a specific version, I'm just going to use the latest. If I want to change, um, don't want to perform any updates, I've got a lot of flexibility to define how I configure my deployment. And remember, all I'm doing at this stage is defining a configuration file, like a, almost like a template, as I described, which is going to determine then what actually gets deployed. So that's going to take a few moments. It's creating that configuration file and creating the keys. And that is should be pretty much, oh, it cleans up anything that's old on there as well, which is always useful. And there you go, there's the new one. So that's not the whole process. Remember, this is just a configuration file that's essentially going to be used to then install AKS HCI. So if you had a configuration file that you wanted to apply to all your different nodes, you could you could essentially copy and paste that one to all of your different nodes and use that as the basis. Again, more automation. So here we go, uh, we're doing any cleanup and I'm not gonna make you sit through all of that, but it took around about seven or eight minutes or so, not very long. Now, one difference here is we only pull down the Linux container host, but there's our cluster deployed, our management cluster. And if I go back to Windows Admin Center this time, you'll see same kind of thing. It's a different clustered environment, but you'll see the same kind of thing. Uh, control plane VM, load balancer VM, exactly the same as what we deployed through the Windows Admin Center. Now, there's a couple of other things we can we can quickly take a look at. Um, so if you want to get the cube config file, if you remember before we did that at the end of the WAC process, we just clicked on the download button. Same kind of thing here, just programmatically that we're doing that. Okay, so that's how you would how you would do that, and that's it. So, does that fit with the easy uh, approach? I would say yes for the oh, win. I I give you that win, definitely, definitely. I I love how like this makes it this makes it so much fun to watch. It's like okay, I create one and then I create the config yep. file. I take that config file and I go out and deploy it. Like depends on how many times I want it. And I think like if I would be an IT pro working in a company, I would like a Tell to my boss, hey, like I will take care of these hundred cluster setups um, and probably take a couple of days off as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're right, you're right, and that 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 config file becomes incredibly important. So I'm able to really define exactly what I want to do and really start to standardize. But remember that that's the management infrastructure, the platform service. So at this point, our developers are still saying, oh, I need my Kubernetes clusters, and we're like, well, hold on, we're just getting the the infrastructure laid down first, and then. We will go into, again, back to the components, the right-hand side of the graphic here where we're going to deploy uh, the what's termed here Kubernetes cluster. Some people call it a target cluster. Some people call it a workload cluster. But it's where your applications will ultimately reside and run. And so in that respect, I've got a couple of demos for that as well. And I've got the, the easy GUI method again. And I've got the PowerShell method again. So should we go in the same order? We'll do admin center again uh, first. I think that's, that probably makes sense. Um, and we will pick off pick up where we left off previously. So in Admin Center, in this case, I'm going to go to the new add, uh, or not the new add, but add. And then I've got a new um, preview uh, option now for creating the worker nodes, the worker clusters. So similar to what we saw before, a very streamlined wizard. But what's nice about this, yes, it defines the prereqs, what we need. What's nice about this here is if I go to the Azure portal, which many of you will be familiar with, um, and anybody who has... Uh, created a Kubernetes cluster using the actual AKS service in Azure. If I bring up uh, Kubernetes here, just use my uh, the power of search and my slow typing and click on add and add Kubernetes cluster. Just take a look at the steps here. So you've got basics, you've got pools, networking, and so some are obviously very relevant to Azure. 
But we've tried to actually capture that approach in a similar way through the WAC wizard as well. So you've got the basics, the no pools, the networking. Obviously, some of it is going to uh, differentiate, but we've tried to capture it as close as possible. So right off the bat, I can start integrating with Azure Arc. So some people will prefer to do that after the deployment of the cluster. I'm going to do it before or during the deployment in this case. So I'm going to enable that functionality. And then you're defining your actual target cluster that's going to run your workload. So in this case, you can call it whatever you like. Um, and then you choose your, in your environment that this is going to be deployed onto. So in this case, it's going to deploy to the cluster, the, the Azure Stack HCI cluster that's got the Kubernetes infrastructure laid down, the management services that we described and showed earlier. Provide some credentials, again, password one, two, three. Uh, then I can pick my my version of Kubernetes, and we provide support for the last couple of versions, including the latest. And we try to keep pace with Azure in that respect as well, so you've got that consistency. Now, in the primary node pool, uh, we need obviously, obviously a, a group of VMs for system services as well, control plane, load balance. So we can specify the size of those. And then for our actual workers that are going to run our applications, again, we can choose Linux or Windows, as we described earlier on. But I'm going to describe, I'm going to create, uh, excuse me, a, a, a pool of Linux and Windows. I can choose the size as well. I'm going to put them in the same cluster. So the unit of management is the cluster, but I can still have mixed workloads and infrastructure within those. So in this case, I've created a Linux node pool with two nodes and of a certain size. And we've used the Azure nomenclature for sizing. So you see standard A4 V2 is there in the drop down, but you can choose from a variety of different sizes, and Hyper-V will create those on-prem uh, as appropriate. And then finally, we define our networking. So whether we want to specify any more um, uh, unique uh, IP address ranges that are unique to our environment, adjust the load balancer settings, of which we will add more and more capabilities as we go through to the final release. Remember, we're still in preview. Uh, we define our persistent storage, which is an important feature for a lot of organizations need that persistent storage. And we've been asked by many customers for that. So that's part of it. And then we click to create the Kubernetes cluster. Remember, this is creating a cluster that our workloads will run on. And that took about three or four minutes uh, to create once I'd clicked um, create. And then same kind of thing as before, you can download your kubeconfig file and your SSH key uh, in the same kind of way we saw before for the management cluster. But remember, this time, this is for the actual worker cluster. So this is something you might give to your development teams to say, yeah, this is what you need to connect through Kube Control or through your other um, management tooling you may already have. And you'll see I clicked the Azure Arc link, and it took me straight to the Azure portal. We'll explore that a bit more later. And if we take a look at what was deployed on this cluster, not under Azure Kubernetes Service, but under virtual machines, you'll see uh, we've got a whole host more VMs that have been deployed on our cluster. Remember, we just had two before. Now we've got the control plane load balancer, and then MD0, MD1 are our different node uh, pools within the same cluster, some running Windows, some running uh, Linux. And so that that is essentially an end-to-end -end infrastructure management services, then uh, deployment of a target worker cluster, all using Windows Admin Center. No code at all in that one. So again, I, I, easy box. Take. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm I'm like very impressed. So multiple things I just saw. So first of all, um, obviously, it, again, it makes us very easy to deploy all of that as you just mentioned. Secondly, I like the consistency. So even with the with the like when we select the nodes and then we select the sizes, we actually keep the consistency mm -hmm. in Azure VM sizes, right? So you can actually yeah. see it's really like we really keep track of consistency. And the second thing I think that is like something. For those who haven't really realized that yet, this then takes care of all the storage management, of all the virtual network setups. So I don't have to like fiddle around and say, okay, what what virtual networks do I actually need? Like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like, do what do I need to figure out? How many do I need? Like, how big? Like, I can actually just the wizard guides me through all of that and and yep. does then create everything. There's nothing I need to know. Like. I remember when we needed to configure the network controller and we had to work to create these virtual networks and stuff like that. That is all done now by that service, right? We, we take care of as much as we, we possibly can to make it easy, but also we still give you, remember this is running on your premises, so you still have the ability to be flexible. And if you need to tweak certain things for your applications and workloads, you've still got the opportunity to do that. 
but we try and take care of the, the vast majority of that, that plumbing for you and the integration points so that we make it as easy as possible. So you can focus on your applications. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah, and so do you wanna check out the PowerShell version? Yes, absolutely. So let's, let's do have it, okay. Surprisingly, again, this is a bit shorter. So <laughs> we, we continue on from where we were before. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna create new AK, AKSHI cluster, give it a name. Uh, and then all I need to specify is how many control plane nodes, how many Linux nodes, as we saw before, the Windows nodes. I can specify things like sizing as well. You'll see I'm, I'm tabbing through a few control uh, plane size, load balancer size, Linux node VM size. So I can specify those if I want. Uh, Azure AD integration is, is uh, something that's being worked on as well. But I'm just going to hit that and go. And it's going to validate what I've got. And it's going to go ahead and create the cluster. So that's going to create, in this case, a one node Linux uh, cluster, no Windows nodes in this one. Uh, so that won't take quite as long because um, we're only deploying fewer nodes, as we saw before. Um, but it doesn't take long at all. Now, one thing to note as well is I know we mentioned VM sizes. Oh, there we go. That's, that's done already. But there's no ARM templates here. So we're not using Azure Resource Manager to deploy any of the VMs. So this is essentially just running Hyper VVMs uh, on-prem. There you see our cluster. So same version as the management cluster. It's been provisioned one Linux worker node in there as well. But what happens if I want to perhaps go to two nodes? Well, I can just run this command again, Linux node count two now. Now I have to include the node count of Windows even if I'm not changing anything. So I added zero for the node count for Windows. And now what's happening is AKS is orchestrating the addition of that extra node. And there that's and some of this I've sped up a little bit, so it's not quite as fast as that. I'm not that magical, but it's it's still pretty fast. You know, I didn't want you to kind of sit and watch uh, a yellow text on screen for a while. If we look at our versions we've got available, you'll see we've got a couple of different uh, options there uh, for for mainly for more so for Linux, but also uh, the latest version for Windows, which we'll add to over time. And then if I want to get that config file for my new cluster, I just run that command as well to get AKS HCI credential. Um, so from there, if we take a look, if we clear the screen out there actually, and then let's just take a look in WAC again and see what's been deployed. You'll see this time there's just the one worker uh, cluster with, uh, well, one worker cluster again, but this time it's just got two Linux nodes in as we added one, no Windows nodes in that one. But we could go ahead and run the same command again and add Windows worker nodes as well. So Pretty quick, pretty easy, I would say. I think that's another win. That's four for four, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You, you like keep on impressing me here. Um, <laughs> one question I had though, while like you showed these demos, obviously we have now the PowerShell setup, and mm -hmm. then we, like for example, you showed how you like did adding a note um, to one, like adding an extra note to it, right, to the note pool. Um, when I did the setup in WAC, for example, let's say I created the first note pool uh, with WAC. Can I then use PowerShell to add another node to that node pool, or do I need to need to go back and use WAC? I think I if you if you're yeah if you're down the WAC path, you should you should go down the WAC path and down the PowerShell path, go down that path. But I think we are working to as we go through the preview process, based on feedback, to unify uh, the approaches so the compatibility is is as you would expect. You know, using one doesn't invalidate the other. But I think during the early stages of the preview process, which yeah. is more you might have experienced. Um, it was very much kind of, yeah, use one path or use the other path. Okay. But, um, and PowerShell does give you a bit more flexibility for certain testing scenarios as well, um, because then WAC hooks onto the PowerShell, obviously, so if, if uh, a bit later. But either way, we're working towards uh, unifying those approaches. And even in the latest releases, which the December update is currently the most recent, but when this goes out, there may be a, a January release available. Either way, those more recent releases of Admin Center have just added more functionality. We're getting more management control. So it, the innovation is just happening so quickly that you'll benefit from it in no time. And um, you, the convergence will 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 happen in, in the near future. OK. Right. That was perfect. So, cool. So, so the that's, next, yeah, go on. Go on. Go for it. The, the next thing I want to know, I, I mean, OK, we showed out how you set up all of that. But so now I want to actually deploy an application. Uh, I yeah. want to use that Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, about that. That's that's tough, but I can show you how how easy I can make it for you. Okay, so um, yeah, deploying this, I've got the um, I'm categorizing this into a simple application. Uh, I don't want to overemphasize this, and and straight into the demo here. Then, so what I'm going to do is essentially 
deploy a simple application. Let me uh, start this off. I recorded this a few days ago. Um, I'm going to deploy a voting application where I can vote for cats and dogs and, and do very simple stuff. So I've copied this YAML file, which is like a descriptor. It's a bit like a template in some ways. It contains the information about the components of this application, the image, the names, the cluster port, the ports it needs, the cluster configuration, the image repository where this is going to come from. So in this case, the Microsoft Container Registry, resources this app will use, ports that it needs, as I said, for the load balancer, in this case, port 80. So that YAML file is easy to read, easy to write, and used as part of the deployment. So in this case, if we zoom in here and make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to use Kube Control to get my cluster nodes. So this should be familiar to any uh, Kubernetes admin, but IT pros can start to get on board with this as well. It's just listing my nodes. In this case, the two spare nodes at the bottom there. And I'm going to apply that particular YAML file to the environment, so using Kube Control. And now that's going to go ahead and start to actually create uh, the services that make up this particular application. You'll see I'm, I'm checking for them there, and I'll see that, okay, it's already been provisioned to a certain extent. It's got a low balancer IP externally, so I can paste that in and then get my voting app just like that. So that was how quick I got my new application from that YAML file. It pulled down the Redis information, it pulled down the necessary container image, and it stood it up incredibly quickly. So what's actually happening? Let's see what's powering this under the covers. So if we get the pods and list and understand what's actually powering this simple application, you'll see there's a back end and a front end, as demonstrated in the YAML file that we saw earlier. And if I want to scale this up, for example, manually in this case, I'm going to say I actually want to deploy replicas, five replicas, so five instances of the front end of this application. And you'll see some of them are running very quickly, just up and running in five seconds. Some are still being created. I'm essentially just refreshing the check of the pods every few moments and sped this up a little bit. That, that wasn't 30 seconds, but um, it, it, no time at all. I've now got five instances of this application uh, powering this particular voting app. Because obviously, if everyone starts to vote for cats and dogs, then uh, we're going to want to make sure that we can handle that increased demand. Um, uh, but the, pro the, the premise there that I've shown there is I used an existing YAML file for an application that could have been built by my developers, stored in GitHub, whatever. And in this case, we're not using any shared repo for, for code. I've just, I've just been handed this YAML file, or my developers have got it themselves. They've deployed it. Kubernetes has, has read this, this YAML file, pulled down the necessary container images from wherever needed to be. So in this case, the container registry, the Microsoft container registry. It started them up, and I've been able to scale that up as well using a simple command. And this is using Kube Control, which is can be very familiar, but I, I could also use other, uh, if I've got other investments in uh, technology management tooling and so on, uh, I could do that as well. So was that a simple application? I think that was a simple application. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And it reminded me completely of like when you work with AKS in Azure, right? It's like exact kind of like that works exactly the same way. And that is that is awesome. Like I don't need to learn, like if I'm familiar with Kubernetes or if I'm familiar with AKS in Azure, I just go on and write, do it on my AKS cluster running on Azure Stack HCI. So exactly, yeah. yeah. So so that was uh, that was kind of the rundown of AKS on HCI and, and everything it is. Let's just quickly go through some of these more pillars, and then I'll wrap up with some data, the cool data services stuff. And so I think I've got one more demo to show you as well. But we've talked about hybrid, how you integrate with Arc. You saw through the WAC wizard there that you can integrate with um, with Azure Arc as part of the the whole process. Um, you can also do the, that with PowerShell as well. We've got application portability. Now that you've got your app containerized, you can move it easily. We don't have a live migrate command where you can send it to the cloud and back, but the speed at which you can deploy new instances of applications, they're so portable in that, that YAML file or the code base, you can easily move things around and share the container registries. And AKS and AKS HCI are sharing the same code base. So we're not, we're, although we're adapting it to run on-premises on, on Hyper-V, a lot of it is is essentially the same. So you've got that uh, uniformity and consistency there. Um, so in terms of onboarding, as, I, as you saw in the admin center wizard, there was a little radio button and then provide your subscription information and so on. In PowerShell, you need Azure CLI, you need to register uh, the Arc um, Kubernetes services in your subscription. Um, and then you'd create your resource group and then a service principal with enough permission to deploy a resource within that uh, subscription or resource group. And then the command is simply install AKSHI arc onboarding and then pass in a few of those parameters. 
resource group, cluster name, et cetera, subscription ID. You get the idea. There shouldn't be anything yeah. anything new to, to people. But either way, you, you don't have to onboard to Arc, but it's definitely valuable because you unlock some great hybrid management, um, which I'll show here. So let me take you through. So this should be pretty familiar to, to many folks. This is actually what we saw before when I uh, finished the, the WAC deployment. Because in Arc, once we get the cluster deployed and, and visualized in Arc, I can start to integrate with monitoring. I can start to uh, handle some more of the configuration here, some more of the automation. I can also integrate with, with things like um, GitOps and also Azure Policy, which I know you've got many uh, other sessions and videos on. But if we take a look at our Arc view here, all of these clusters here, Kubernetes clusters, are coming from other locations. And then you've got them side by side with native uh, Kubernetes clusters running in uh, Azure, in AKS. So if we expand this one again, you've got HCI-based clusters, you've got EKS, GKE, you've got all sorts of different clusters. And if I click on one in particular, uh, this environment's got a little bit more information. If I click on GitOps, this is where, and in this case, I'm not applying any configuration files, but I'll, I'll show you one where I am. This is where if my development team is, is storing their code, their applications on GitHub or a centralized Git repository, I can integrate that with, with Azure Arc, and that can be my source of my truth for my application. So whenever we make changes to our app on GitHub, it gets deployed uh, automatically. And then I can also apply Azure Policy to enable me to start to ensure compliance against certain characteristics for my environment, whether that's related to passwords or certain network configurations or whatever it may be. We've got tons and tons of policies you can apply to your Kubernetes clusters to ensure they stay compliant. And, and I know you've done a lot of work with, with Azure Policy in the past for servers in particular, uh, Thomas, and it's extremely powerful. And now as an organization, you can really standardize what gets deployed to your Kubernetes clusters with GitOps, and then how it stays in compliance using Azure Policy. And both of those combined are incredible value and showcase how valuable it is to integrate with, with Azure Arc. Because unless you do that, you don't get access to, to those kind of uh, configuration options. So that's, uh, we mentioned before, that's that's around hybrid integration. We mentioned before, um, it's not just about Linux and it's not just about Windows specifically, although I've, I showed deploying a, a node pool with Windows container, uh, container host and Linux. And then in the second PowerShell demo, just did Linux. And we deployed an incredibly powerful application onto our Linux infrastructure to do to handle voting. Uh, and because those clusters, those node pools, Windows and Linux can be part of the same cluster, it really helps simplify the streamlined management of those. I'm not have to treat them completely differently, which is which is valuable as well. And then finally, this goes without saying, security is top of mind for so many organizations, so many enterprises, uh, and it's top of mind for Microsoft, both in the cloud and out of the cloud. So we bring all of our innovations that we've built in Azure and, uh, and that we've enhanced and released to the community for making Kubernetes incredibly secure. We, Microsoft, provide the container host images that are hardened against vulnerabilities. We provide the updates and patches and servicing to ensure that your container hosts are updated. You're in control ultimately of when you apply those, but we build those images so you don't have to worry about that. And we we integrate with our, our um, uh, security, system, uh, security CAs and also Active Directory through GMSA. So for those with Windows workloads who want to be able to sign into container applications, that integration is there as well. And all of this, it should goes, goes without saying, how we build our applications and our services is through our secure development lifecycle with security by secure by design. And from a user and a tenant perspective, you can integrate this with Security Center to monitor threats and, uh, and assess your environment for how secure it is as well. So loads of cool stuff. I know I'm going I'm going pretty fast over that sort of stuff, but it's I'm not going to, I'm not going to show those. But these are things that you can certainly benefit from with uh, with AKS HCI. Um, so why would you use it? Well, modernizing apps, going traditional VMs through to containers is the natural next step for a lot of organizations. Embracing new cloud native applications. But where we'll spend most of the time in a few moments is, is on the data services, because this is really, really cool stuff uh, and how you can bring and benefit from our innovations in Azure in your own environment. But we saw earlier that Windows deployments with a container host was easy through WAC. I could have done just as easily through PowerShell. So if you've got legacy.NET applications that are running on physical or 
virtual machines that are perhaps oversized, perhaps low utilization maybe, and you think, well, how can I modernize that and get more bang for my buck? Well, containerizing that, of which we've got tooling to help with that through Windows Admin Center, you could bring that into the Kubernetes environment and run that on AKS HCI side by side with your other .NET and Linux-based applications. And then you're starting to embrace new cloud native applications for your new applications. If you've got, organized, you've got developers within your organization who are building the next generation of applications, it's unlikely they're gonna be building monolithic applications of old. They're gonna be building microservices and lightweight, stateless and stateful applications that can run uh, in containers and be very portable across and scaled very quickly as we saw in, in one of the previous demos. So all of that in mind, utilizing AKS HCI as that platform and having the portability to go to public cloud as well is, is again, very, very valuable. And then I touched on data services. So if you want to embrace a PaaS database service uh, today in the public cloud, Microsoft has got a couple of offerings. Uh, Azure SQL Managed Instance, we've got Postgres Hyperscale. There's all sorts of, uh, of other solutions as well in, in, in Azure. Those are just two that I, that I want to focus in on. But the challenge there is what if you need to run that database workload directly next to your application on-premises? Well, the round trip time to the cloud might be a little bit too much or the compliance, you may not be able to run it in Azure. Well, with Azure Arc enabled data services, we essentially allow you to separate those services like Azure Man uh, SQL Managed Instance and Postgres Hyperscale. They're containerized and they can run on Kubernetes and that Kubernetes could be AKS HCI. So you could bring those services down, project them and deploy them down from Arc onto your Kubernetes cluster that's running in your data center. So you get the win-win, you get the benefit of the PaaS service, you get the integration with your existing tools like uh, Azure Data Studio and, and your familiar uh, database management tooling, and they're running on your premises on a, an incredibly quick to deploy, streamlined, containerized platform. So, and all of that is delivered with a single uh, vendor support statement it's from Microsoft, from Azure Stack HCI right through to Arc and the data services. And so when you think about the benefit there, you never have to think about, again, SQL update versions, again, because there's no end of life to an evergreen service. It's always the latest version. You saw how quick it was for me to scale up and down with containers earlier. The same applies to SQL. The management is unified because I can now have a single view with my data services, we'll see in a moment, of on-prem and in cloud, in public cloud resources from a data perspective. Like we saw before, security by design, so we're passing all of the best practices for security around policy, around governance, around RBAC, around just intrinsic security within the platform. And for those that want to embrace the cloud billing model, if you're already embracing Azure, then having this on-premises fits with that model as well. So you pay for what you consume versus the traditional perpetual uh, licensing approach uh, as we've seen previously. So what you see here is an example of, of a, a resource group in Azure that's got the Kubernetes service, uh, a Kubernetes deployment in the Kubernetes service, the Arc Data Controller, which is kind of like one of the first key components that gets deployed in order then to deploy the other um, uh, Azure Arc enabled data services components. And you'll see we've deployed a Postgres instance, we've deployed a couple of SQL managed instances, and they're all running through, managed through Azure Arc, and they could be running on premises on AKS HCI, they could be running in another public cloud, but all of them are centrally managed and then policies applied, secure security center integration, monitoring integration, all of that stuff from one single port. And uh, you know, this stuff is incredibly powerful, Thomas. You know this as, as well as anybody. This is this is awesome stuff. And an AKS HCI is just yet another platform you can use on-prem to, to benefit from this. Yeah, no, I love how, how all our hybrid stuff is coming together because again, uh, we will have all the sessions uh, at, at this event uh, talking about the uh, Azure Arc uh, and data services. Uh, we have a session about how to modernize your um, Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2 application to contain Windows containers. And so this is actually perfect. This really brings everything together here um, where we can see. Yeah, and, that, and that's right. And this slide is, is really the epitome of, of that top to bottom supported uh, solution from Microsoft. So right at the bottom, you've got great hardware from our partners running Azure Stack HCI from a software perspective. And then you've got the AKS layer that we touched on that we we all now agree is so easy to deploy in, with PowerShell or, or Windows Admin Center. And then you've got the data services on top. And, and data services is one example of one of these services we're, we're bringing to 
allow you to run on your infrastructure, and I'm sure that won't be the last. And then you've got your applications and services that you build running on, on top of that environment as well, and integrating with the different layers. So it really is an incredible uh, picture and a, an incredible opportunity for you to modernize in a trusted, secure uh, partnership with Microsoft. And, and we certainly want to partner with you on, on your, your journey there for them. Yep. Um, and, and so my call to action, what I would definitely ask you to do is, and you saw it at the start of a couple of the videos, is register for the download of AKS HCI, kick the tires with it, try it out. Uh, you don't necessarily need a big, super-powered Azure Stack HCI cluster. You can actually do this on a single Windows Server um, 2019 Hyper-V node if you've got that spare in your environment. We're working on some documentation to do this nested as well. So you've got options even if you don't have hardware. Install it. You've seen how easy it was. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. Uh, really, really straightforward, whether it's PowerShell or WAC. And then check out our docs and, and go forward from there and, and embrace Kubernetes uh, from a learning perspective and really help to support your developers within your organizations. It's That would be my key call to action there for you. So I will definitely go out and download um, the preview and actually try it out to make sure I can like see if it really is that easy as you just showed me. It, it absolutely it is. It is. It is. <laughs> it is, I promise you. <laughs> I, I believe you. I believe you. But I still want to have it. I want to try it out. I want to play with that and see if my applications, for example, are working uh, on that as well, because I'm really doing my first steps, like bring that, bring those application and containerize them. Yep. Um, so obviously, I will go to that page and actually download it. But do you have a little bit more resources I can learn more? I do, yeah. And one thing to note about downloading as well, we, we generally release a new build about once a month. So we, we announce a blog post, we, we tell you what's new in that particular release, release. And you can also find details about the releases on the bottom link here on the list here. So on GitHub, we're using GitHub pretty extensively in the development of AKS HCI. So you can file issues, you can find, you can let us know if it needs a feature that's missing that you really benefit would really benefit from. And you can also see our roadmap and our, our, uh, our release information there as well. And, and so we release generally monthly. So you download the new build and, and validate while we're in preview. Uh, there's loads of great documentation going from the bottom to the top here, uh, strangely. Uh, our documentation is, is great on, on Microsoft Docs site. There's a link to the evaluation that you can download you, yourself. Uh, there's some more announcement information and blog posts, but you've got everything you need from, from there uh, as part of this session. And if you do want to refer anyone else either to this session or, or want to refer them to the product pages, the marketing pages, then the top link there can help you out and just give you the overview of what we're doing here and what this is all about. But they're the key resources. Download it, check out GitHub, and follow the docs, and, and you'll, you'll not go far wrong. Awesome. This is awesome. Again, we will put all the links down in descriptions, or you can just like watch down and actually uh, click on these links uh, Matt just showed us. Um, with that, I really, really want to say thank you, Matt, uh, for being here. Uh, it was really a fun session, and I learned a lot, and I believe you, it's that easy now. Um, no, it was really, really good. I really hope uh, to talk to you soon again. I know there is a lot of things happening uh, in our hybrid space, and especially also on um, AKS, on Azure Stack HCI. So again, thank you very much. Um, and for all the viewers out there, uh, if you want to know more, if you want to watch more sessions, especially on the topics I mentioned, um, for example, the Azure Arc enabled data services, or for example, how to modernize uh, your existing um, Windows applications to, con to containerize them, um, check out aka.ms slash ops talks, where you can find all the other sessions uh, and presentations. So thank you very much. Um, and enjoy the rest of the show.